टेन सेकेंड्स टू गो मिस्टर डिप्टी स्पीकर सर फ्रॉम द स्पीचेस विच द ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर फॉर प्लानिंग मेड इन दिस हाउस एंड इन द अदर हाउस एंड फ्रॉम अ परूजल ऑफ द नोट विच हैज बीन सर्कुलेटेड टू अस रिगार्डिंग द प्रोग्रेस दैट हैज बीन मेड इन द टेंथ फाइव ईयर प्लान I feel that the government of India is trying to assuage the feeling of dissatisfaction in the country through promises of bright future promises of better efforts and general promise that everything is going to turn out well and that there need not be any fear or anxiety in the country while saying this i realize that the country has made certain progress in the development of our economy during the last decade industrial production has increased agricultural production has increased the productive capacity has been built up and we have also got employment opportunities being created above all we have gained valuable experience in the development of our economy especially in planning and these are all to the credit side of the plan unfortunately the price that we have paid for this progress is rather heavy the imbalances that we have created are likely to go out of control unless definite steps are taken to see that the imbalances are corrected at the earliest opportunity the problem of the distribution of income that is generated as a result of the development efforts in the country is a perennial question and comes up again and again in one form or the other before the house and though i realize that no definite opinion is possible unless we have got some authoritative data and analysis on the subject there is clear indication of the fact that if not economic wealth at least economic power is being concentrated in very few hands as long as economic power is concentrated in such few hands it will not be possible for us to develop in the manner in which we like whatever may be our regulatory and control apparatus whatever may be our policy whatever may be the objectives that we place before the country similarly the imbalance between the rural and the urban sector is also increasing i do not know whether in the rural areas some income has been pumped in as a result of our planned development it is possible that the well to do peasants the richer peasants might have benefited as a result of our economic development but as far as rural area as a whole is concerned the disparity and imbalance are definitely growing and that is also a matter of concern the very fact that urbanization takes place at such a rapid rate in our country is visible proof that the imbalance has been growing with the result that neither the urban areas nor the rural areas are today 
in a position to live the life that they were living before our planned developmental efforts started now there is congestion in the urban areas the civic amenities are all on the point of breaking down and they continuously break down with the slightest accident here or there the slums are increasing at a rapid rate and unemployment is increasing whatever may be the figures regarding crimes that may be published by the government there is a general impression in the country that the crime situation is also deteriorating that is because of the congestion in the urban areas due to lack of resources they are unable to deal with the problems that arise as a result of this congestion and the problem of law and order becomes more acute as a result of this urbanization <coughs> thirdly the question of unemployment has also taken a rather serious turn and when the government spokesman gives sermons to others regarding the agitation against high prices and higher taxes they completely forget that year by year one earner has to support more and more people and we have got the authority of no less a person than the planning minister himself to say that the real income of the earner at least in the lower income groups has not risen and in spite of that the earner has to support a larger and larger number of dependents there is so much dissatisfaction in the country that people are protesting against rising prices and rising taxes the planning minister has given us a frank picture regarding what has happened in the first year of the 10th plan period and we are grateful to him for this frank picture the figures that he has cited have given us a clear idea of what is happening to our economy at the present moment but he has tried to strike a note of optimism he has tried to explain the regions that are responsible for this state of affairs and he has also indicated that the planning commission is conscious of all these drawbacks i wish to submit that the crux of the whole matter therefore is the inability on the part of the government to manipulate the prices in a manner whereby it may be possible to achieve crop planning in order to achieve the desired results as long as this price structure is allowed to move in the manner in which it is moving today whatever may be the policy of the government whatever amount of credit they may pump into the agricultural sector whatever the amenities they may give to the farmers it will not be possible for us to achieve the targets in the manner in which we want to achieve i would have been satisfied if as a result of this increased agricultural production the farmer was better off but we find that whenever there is increased production in response to higher prices the markets slump down so heavily that ultimately the farmer stands to lose so the farmer loses both ways and the country also loses